<laughs> I got a granddaughter who likes dressing up too. Cute as a button. She loves Peter Pan. She always asking this old timer to read it to her. She's sharp as a tack. Full of ideas, questions about the lost boys and those pirates. Probably because... Because I never grow old. She says to me, Grandpa, are you old? I said, yes, sweetheart, I'm old, and one day you're going to be as old as me. And this gets her, her brains all cooking, and she says, well, Grandpa, are you gonna die? And I say, yes, yeah, sweetheart, of course I'm gonna die one day. Well, it's not gonna be today. And finally, she says to me, Grandpa, am I gonna die? How do you explain a question like that to a kid? So when Halloween rolls around the next year, there she is, proud as punch, she stands up and she goes, Grandpa, I'm gonna be a pirate.
Yo, bro, why don't you pick up some groceries on your way back, all right? We're running kind of low, and don't tell mom, all right, but I'm broke. Son, while you're living in D.C., we have to set some ground rules when your brother comes to stay with you. I've been patient with you, Aiden. We need those schematics by 10 a.m. tomorrow, or else we need... Mark, it's your responsibility. Come on, Aiden. Aiden, this is your mother. Pick up the phone. Aiden, pick up the phone, man. Aiden, Aiden, Aiden. 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 Hello everyone, I am Saul Gascon, producer for Overkill's The Walking Dead. We know that you guys are really excited to see more about the game we've built with Robert Kirkman and his crew at Skybound. So today we're going to give you a sneak peek into Georgetown, a historical neighborhood of Washington DC that has seen better times. As an environment artist, contrast is really important. Creating a place that feels safe until a walker appears around the corner, I think that's what makes Kirkman's uh, universe really interesting. I was super excited to find out that we're gonna work with the Walking Dead IP and, and Skybound, since I'm a huge fan of the graphic novel and the universe in general. We try to do uh, environmental storytelling in, in, I guess, different kind of ways. So one example is an apartment we created in Georgetown. When the player walks around there, they get a picture of how the world was before the walker came into the world. One of the more gratifying parts of our job as lighting artists is that we get to work together with the environment artists to basically take their art and our lighting to create a compelling visual world. To meet the unique requirements of our project, we've developed our own custom lighting solution inside of Unreal Engine. So from a narrative perspective, when we're lighting indoor scenes versus outdoor scenes, we can do quite a few different things on the inside versus the outside. In the interior, you can stage a lot more and you've got generally smaller spaces to work with, which means you can paint with much more details, whereas on the outside, you will paint much broader strokes. What's important um, is that we stay within the universe and try to make things that make sense in that universe. Yeah, we had to do a lot of research on how society and you know the environments break down if no one takes care of it. You know, no one cuts the trees, no one cuts the lawn, no one picks up the trash on the street, and where do things start to rust? Where does mold start to build up? One of the most important part of being an environment artist is always ask the question why. Why did the pool of blood happen there or why did someone barricade the windows? Because then you can give everything a meaning. And if you give everything a meaning, you can get a sense of a lived-in world. Thanks for joining us today. I hope you like what we've shared. Tune in next time for a deeper dive into Horizon Walkers in Overkill's The Walking Dead.